it's Lauren J. Welcome back or welcome if you're new. I like to do get ready with me style videos using products that are new, new to me or just need a little bit more love in my collection. And today I'm going to use products that are needing more love in my collection and we're going to do a summer inspired bronzy look. We're just going to get into it today and I'm just going to talk about the products as I use them. I am going to be starting out with the Danessa Myricks Blurring Balm Powder. Because this has Oops Light in it and it is supposed to be moisture absorbing, absorbing, I am using it as a primer or at least testing it out as a primer right now. I've had this product for quite a while and I've found different ways to use it and I've used it under makeup, over makeup, on its own. So I've used it on my under eyes as like a powder setter um setting powder i guess and i have used it on its own as like a foundation and like i said right now i'm using it under makeup as kind of like an oil absorbing or moisture absorbing powder for the summer it is a very matte finish so it's not going to be like a rosy glow type finish it is going to leave your face looking a little bit or at least my face in this color looking a little bit flat. I do actually, I just like obliterated it, but I do have quite a bit of pan in this. Um, and you don't need very much of it actually, just like the tiniest little bit. But I do enjoy the Danessa Myricks products that I have. I have been using her multi-chrome our infinite multi-chrome liners. Um, I've been using those the last couple weeks. I'm not going to use one today because they don't quite match my look, but I've really been enjoying those. And I do want to try out the blushes, the balm blushes that she just came out with. And next I'm going in with the Anastasia Beverly Hills. This is the Dip Brow Gel in Taupe. I just picked up this new color for me. It's not a new color, but it's a new color for me. I usually get it in caramel. I decided to try the taupe just to get a more, um, a less um, red brownish look and just more of something that matches my um, blondish dishwater blonde hair. <laughs> um, and just, I really do love this formula. I think it's really nice on my brows. It just really um, gives them color and volume and shape and I'm not really trying to do like a soap brow spiky brow thing I just just want to sort of make them look fuller and have some body and frame my face and I find these I do still love the pencil the small tip pencil um, the name escapes me right now. Everybody knows the name. It's the famous um, skinny tip pencil from uh, ABH, but I do tend to go through those very quickly. And I think they're $23 now. And I think these are, this is $20 and you can, no, this, uh, this is the mini. This is the mini for $9. The full size is $20, I believe. And you can keep that for many, 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 many months. And because I'm going to be doing more of a bronzy coppery look today, I'm going to be using the Laura Mercier Caviar Eye Stick in Copper as my base for my eyes. So I'm going to put that down right now. And these eye sticks have been around forever but I have discovered them in the past year or so and I think they're just really outstanding as a base for the shadows that I like to use whether the I've used the matte one at least one of the matte ones and I've used a couple of the shimmery ones and they just really work for me And just to add a little bit of glow to my face over the Danessa Myricks, I'm going to be using the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. This is in shade 1 Fair. And just a few drops. And 
don't need very much. There is mica, I think, or there's some kind of sparkle in this, but um, you don't need much to, if you're looking for a more subtle glow. And just kind of concentrate that around the areas that I'm going to want to accentuate the glow. Don't need it necessarily all over my face. And as you can see, that gives the shine that the Danessa Myricks um, Balm Powder tends to take away. So I have been going back to some of my more putty light products lately, just because the new, um, there's that new Chanel uh, formula in Rosy Beige. I mean, it's part of the sort of uh, Le Beige line, the, the mini bronzers they just came out with. Um, but it's a little bit different because it's supposed to be like a glow cream and it just got me thinking that I do have quite a few things in my collection that kind of act as that sort of glowy primer type thing where like I have the elf halo glow the Danessa Myricks is matte but it's more putty like um and then or it's balm balm putty whatever and then I have the elf putty uh primers which you can get those in matte but you can also get them in like a more shiny formula so and I have in the past used like liquid highlighters underneath my um, foundation to give me that glow. Um, so, I mean, it's not, a, it's not necessarily a new concept, I think, for Chanel because they had such a kind of a limited um, Le Beige release this year. A lot of people are more interested in the rosy beige just because it is um, just a different product for the summer collection. Um, it's not available in the U.S. yet, and even if it was, I need to like really think about the things that I have in my collection right now. And it is the most probably unique thing from the Le Beige collection right now, but if it does become available, I don't know. I mean, I've heard wonderful things, but it's just like I don't, I, I have things in my collection that can give me that. So I think I want to focus on those for now. And to prep my lips, I'm going to be using the Kiss Kiss Bee Glow in 129 Blossom Glow. This is from the summer release. And it just gives a nice little bit of color and some emollients to the lips. So while I'm talking about Chanel and um, while I'm using some Guerlain products, I wanted to talk about some of the fall releases. And I know that people are not really into like fall right now. Look, I'm ready for summer. I'm ready to do, like I said, bronzes and coppers and, and all those fun kinds of things. But there have been some things sneak peeked for fall and I kind of want to just discuss them a little bit. I'm going to be using, starting off with the uh, Red Vanda Quad from Aguerlain. This is their Lunar New Year release with the beautiful orchid velvety packaging. I'm going to be going into this rich r red copper color right here. I'm just placing that a little bit in the outer V for some depth and some color. And so they sneak peek very, very early. And I think it's actually available in Japan right now, um, the Fall Guerlain Nude Collection. Um, and I don't know, I, I feel like, I'll, I'll say this a couple of times, a really stupid part of my brain really wants these things. Um, they're both nude collections. There's one that looks like it's three mattes and one shimmer. And it's got sort of that pink and brown, like I find that to be a really beautiful combination um and i i don't know that i want all those mattes but i think it looks really just like really beautiful just really sexy um and then they have one that's got more of like i think it's all shimmers or at least majority shimmers and it's got a beautiful like bronzy coppery color it's got a deep cocoa color it's got like a nice light highlighter in it i think that one i think it's called called wild nudes or undressed browns something like that um they're just really sexy i think nude 
color stories and like I said I've got nudes for days <laughs> um, uh, I don't necessarily need them I've got coppers and bronzes and all of those things I've got them in my Soleil palette that I'm gonna be using here in just a second I don't need these but a really dumb part of my brain just looks at those and goes I want that <laughs> and they're coming out with a, a nude lipstick collection in um, sort of creams and new uh, creams and mattes so I'm kind of intrigued I've never been super into the refillable Guerlain lipstick cases I'm more into the Dior ones um, I just I don't know I, I find those more fun but um, yeah, I, I am kind of looking forward to those quads and they just look really pretty and beautiful and I don't know why because I have those colors a million times over in my Viseart and in my Lorac shades, but yeah, I don't know. I just I just really want them and I, I've been enjoying this, this quad right here. It's just really pretty and I'm going to keep this open for a little bit because I think I'm going to use the gold in that and then I'm going to go into my Lorac Soleil. I am just so bummed that Lorac just seems to be not putting out anything new lately. I don't, I don't understand. I think these palettes, I don't know if they just didn't sell, but I think this is a really fun concept. I love the fairy tale forest and the soleil and the noir and their matte formula I think is stunning, but I just, I don't know. I, I'm so sad that what do I want to use here in with warm honey right here actually on my finger because it's such a deep honey color just put that all over the lid i think that's gorgeous It's a really beautiful color. It's just really yummy. <laughs> and then kind of going in on the theme of like uh, bronzes and you know highlighty colors and things, I've been thinking about the new sneak peek for Chanel Fall, the oversized highlighters or luminizers or whatever we're calling them now in the different pan designs so that there's three different colors and like six different five or six different pan designs and i'm already picked out the ones that i want i think it's a really fun release i know a lot of people are bummed they're like oh they don't like the oversize they don't like you know i th i think it's a great chance for people who have not been into chanel in the past to get those pan designs so they have the camellia flower that's back um they have the lion that's been in past collections, that's back, and they have that new pearl double C design. I want that in the white pearly shade. Um, they have that star design and the shan design, the, the chain, the shan design, that's been a, a highlighter blush uh, uh, embossing in the past. And so I think it's a really fun way for people who are just getting into Chanel um, to get those pan designs and get them in like an oversized in a color that works for them and you don't have to buy all of them I know they're gonna be expensive like I know the ones from from holiday were $90 I know they're expensive people still bought them um, and I've heard wonderful things from people about the oversized uh, blush and eyeshadow palettes like I know a lot of traditional Chanel clients didn't love them But I know a lot of people who were not normally into Chanel really enjoyed them. So I think um, You know, there's there's kind of like two separate tracks right now for Chanel that they're kind of doing like the more uh, traditional launches with Le Blanc and Le Beige and I love those collections, but they're also doing sort of the oversized ones um, and the more like different, sort of different options, deeper colors, um, more value. I don't know if it's more value, but you know, more product um, and just sort of experimenting with different um, ideas. And I kind of really like that. And I, I, I hope that more of the traditional Chanel customer would be open to that because I do, you know, I, I do see a lot of luxury um, beauty bloggers, you know, talking about how it's not for them and, you know, that's fine. Not everything is for you. And I think earlier this year, a lot of people were just sort of exhausted with all of the releases that were coming out. 
And then when something comes out that's not really for them, they're kind of bummed. And, it, and it's just kind of like, well, but then you don't have to buy it. You don't have to buy it. It's fine. It's not for you. You don't have to buy it. Um, you know, and I'm not criticizing anyone who, you know, is a Chanel customer or reviews Chanel and is, you know, a little bit bummed. I get that. Like, I, I get bummed when things aren't for me. Like, you know, I, w I would love to buy a bunch of stuff from La Beige right now, but, you know, I, I don't need another water fresh tint. I don't need a bronzing cream. I don't need a Rouge Coco Bloom. I have lots of shine lipsticks and bronzers and I have skin tints. Like, I don't need it. So I, I maybe I want to buy something, but I don't need to. Um, I need to get more of this look done. I'm going to go into Desert Rose. Here, this is one of those flakier shades. And I'm just going to put that on the center. Mm -hmm. Ugh, that is gorgeous. Look at this gorgeous penny copper shade. And then, you know, I've kind of gotten the same, you know, vibe from people about the sneak peeked um, multicolored compacts, brush set, and nail files. Everybody's like, oh, it kind of looks cheap. It's not very Chanel, blah, blah, blah. Look, I think it's beautiful. The colors are really stupid. Part of my brain wants all the navy colors, even though navy is not that different from the traditional black that they always do. But a really dumb part of my brain that loves navy and loves Chanel just wants everything in that color. I also want the aquas. I might want some of the orange stuff. Like, and that brush set contains my favorite brush, which is the, I think it's the 101, this face brush. This one right here, which I use for my water fresh tint. I, I, I want it. I want it. I want it. I know it's going to be expensive. I might not actually pick it up, but I, I really just kind of want it. Like I'm already picking out the, the different colors that I want, just like with the highlighters. So I don't know. I just wanted to talk about some of the really far off releases, which honestly, they'll probably become available in the summer. It's so probably not that far off, but, and just like give my opinion on, I, I know that Chanel is going in a lot of different directions right now. And I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Dior just reformulated all of their stuff. Um, so they're obviously, you know, rethinking their position in the luxury beauty world. Um, people are looking at, you know, more luxe brands like Hermes and uh, Gala. You know, all of these different, Dries Van Noten has gotten into the beauty world and so many people are getting into the beauty world right now and I think they really just have to rethink their position because there are, you know, Tom Ford is still putting out $90 quads and people are still buying them. So, you know, there's just, I think if you're like a person who appreciates sort of heritage brands like Chanel and Dior and Hermes and Aguilan and, um, you know, Gucci or uh, Givenchy or Gucci, how many, how many luxury brands can I name apparently? Um, there's just so many that I think they really have to start differentiating themselves um, because their customers are already complaining about the prices of ten thousand dollar bags and <laughs> you know like um the the economy is not the best for a lot of people right now so i i'm not mad that they're becoming what seems like to me maybe a little bit more accessible um and i think we just need to let them experiment a little bit and you know you don't have to buy it but um i think you know and, and Chanel doesn't need my support. They're a major billion dollar brand. Like I don't need to sit here and like defend Chanel. Like they're problematic in many ways and they're expensive. And, but I just, I just like seeing them branch out a little bit. I'm using soft pearl on the inner corner here. Um, and I just like seeing a little bit of even if it's not necessarily innovation, just something different from them. And I, I really enjoy it. Um, and it's gonna be expensive anyway, so, you know. Um, Allison Chase does these wonderful um, historical videos of Chanel and Dior makeup, and of course other brands too, but I've just been really enjoying sort of reminiscing with the old collections, but it also just kind of contrasts with what they're doing now. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not necessarily 
upset about the changes that they're making. I think brands go through reformulations all the time. I've been through a thousand reformulations of Chanel lipsticks and Rouge Cocos and Aqua Lumiers and Rouge Hydra Bases and you know they've they've been a million different formulas. They they do something new like every two or three years because they got to keep their their customer base like rolling over. People want to buy new things. And I'm gonna take a bit of warm vanilla here, this matte shade, and just run that with a big fluffy brush. I'm using my Singe Beauty brushes again today. I just really adore these brushes. And just cleaning up under the eye a little bit. Not really trying to highlight, just clean up a little bit and sort of blur the edges. But yeah, let me know what you think about the Chanel um, releases, the Guerlain Nude Collection, the um, the Dior reformulations. I'm not super attached to anything from Dior because I really just started buying them recently. Um, I just wanted that luxury experience, so they were really good. Their packaging was on point and had a really good rewards program, but I'm not super attached to anything that I've bought from them in terms of the eyeshadow or formula. I think they're pretty standard as far as luxury and they've been around a real long time. They've been in Sephora forever. So um, let me know what you think about sort of these upcoming reformulated releases and that I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on if you're like a dedicated Dior or Chanel makeup fan let me know what you think but you know I'm 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 actually kind of excited for the changes I like it I think it's fun but you know everybody everybody has their opinions their druthers their <laughs> their their wants and their needs so I'm going to do my base with the rose ink serum and the Anastasia foundation also if you've seen that new Chanel sneak peek of the the different colored collections let me know which colors if you're interested in any of those colors, which ones you would pick up. I Like I said, the navy, the orange, the turquoise, I think they all look super fun. And they're not colors that Chanel hasn't done in the past. Like, they've done turquoise, they've done orange. They've, navy is, you know, part of their, you know, major part of their um, color story in addition to the black and white. But, you know, I think... They're new, they're fun, but they're not like super out there in terms of, you know, what like Dries Van Noten is doing with, you know, his fashion or his, um, you know, makeup cases. Like he's out there doing purple lipsticks and bright neon yellow cases. And so I think you can see this gives a lot, this gives a bit of coverage, but you can still see the glow underneath. And I'm all over the place today, so I'm going to go in and line my eyes with the Maybelline Hyper Easy in Pitch Brown. If I can keep my hands steady. Can't leave too much coffee today. Go into my... Uh, Number seven, Lift and Luminate Serum Concealer under the eyes. I'm going to go in with a bit of this ColourPop Cream Gel Liner. This is in Red Rock. It's a really nice, just terracotta shade. 
So I'm gonna run that a little bit here. I don't know if that works, but here we are. And then I'm gonna go in with cinnamon here and just run that under the lower lash line. I got more fallout from using that liner than anything else. I think it's just dry. Maybelline Lash Sensational Full Fan Effect in Brownish Black. And yeah, I think I do want to try that um, new Brown Rouge G mascara from Guerlain that's coming out for fall. So that should be fun. It's a $40 mascara, but hopefully it will be nice. I, again, I haven't tried the Rouge, not the Rouge, Noir G formula. I, I call it the, I don't know, the Rouge G is the lipsticks, right? And the Ombre G are the eyeshadows and the Noir G are the mascaras. I don't know, it looks really pretty and I'm kind of into that nude color story. At least right now. We'll see. When I get to fall, I might be totally sick of metallics and bronzes and nudes and just be ready for something else. But right now, I'm kind of like, oh, I'm feeling that. So, on to cheeks. We're going to be taking the Westman Atelier Light Up Pilot Lip Light Light Lip. Wow. Westman Atelier Lit Up Highlight Stick in Brulee. And I'm just going to be putting this all over my cheeks as a base for a glowy highlight, or base for a glowy blush. It's a little bit too deep for me as a highlight, not quite deep enough for a blush, but it does make a nice base. And I'm going to use a combination of two of my Laura Mercier. So I'm going to be using a combination of ginger and chai. So this is a, called a dirty, matte dirty rose. And this is just like an orange shade, just a bit of chai as a base. Run that atop the brulee. Deeper rosy base for the glow. And I'm sure like they have a sheen version of this like rose or something like that, that Laura Mercy has a sheen version of this that would probably work just as well, but I'm just using what I have. I don't need to go out and buy another color, even though I'm very tempted. And then I'm gonna go in, this is the Lunar New, Lunar New Year one with the little rabbit in it. But this is rapidly fading. This is really pretty color though. Very pigmented, very summery. Not quite coral, very much a, just a muted orange. It's 
But yeah, I'm just gonna let my cheeks and my eyes do the work today. I'm not gonna real do, really do any like deep bronzing or anything. I'm just not in the mood for it, in the blush mood. So that's what I'm gonna do for face now. Hmm. Okay, we're back. So I think I'm gonna take a little bit of this one right here. This is this beautiful sparkly gold shade. Just put that put another sparkly layer on just to highlight. It's really pretty, not too dense, just a little bit. Then I'm gonna do over the Guerlain uh, Kiss Kiss Bee Glow, I'm going to do one of the About Face Matte Fix Lip Pencils. I've been loving to just sort of put this on the inner part of the lip and kind of ombre it out. Not too fussy, just a hint of color over the balm. And this is in Paper Romance. It's more of a nudie brown with a bit of pink and purple in it. Just something a little bit deeper and browner for this color story. Okay, well, I just have to spray my face and I'll be ready to face the day. I am looking forward to a nice Saturday. I'll be posting this on Tuesday as usual, so I hope you had a wonderful weekend or have, are going to have a beautiful upcoming weekend. Um, it's beautiful out today. I'm going to get out for a walk and let me know what you think about this look. What colors are you craving for summer? Are you looking forward to the fall collections? Are you already exhausted with the fall collections? Let me know what you think about Chanel Dior, Gala, all of those things. Thank you so much for watching. Watching? Watching. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Any of those would be welcome and all of them would be deeply, deeply appreciated. And I will see you in the next one, guys. Bye.